Welcome back to I Want to Know. This is episode number seven. Wow. Hello, Pastor Glenda. Hey. All right, this week we're going to try to take on a pretty difficult topic, one that a lot of people have a, a lot of opinions about. And it's it's so interesting that we even have a few op- different opinions on it. So um, feel free to join in, find in the comments with where you fall on this issue. But today's question is, what is God's design for marriage? Now yeah. we're talking about the the role of the husband, the role of the wife, and as we know, that's especially for women, it can be a hard pill to swallow God's design for marriage. Well, I think that's true only because of your generation. You are from the generation of women, women's live. Everything man can do, she can do better. <laughs> All right, now it's already starting, y'all. It's already starting. Okay. All right, well, before we jump into this thing, let's pray. Dear Lord, we just thank you. We just thank you for your yes. presence, God. We thank you for your anointing and we thank you for for using us to try to reach your people, Lord. Let this podcast not be about us, Lord, but be about you. Yes. And reaching out to your children, Lord. Yes, Lord. And just bringing them some peace and deliverance. Deliverance, deliverance, deliverance Lord. Deliverance. Help. In this time. Yes, Lord. We need a revival, just like the song says. Yes. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Would you like to start, or would you like me to start? Well, um, let me start with Malachi 2.14. Well, you go right ahead, honey. All right. It says, why does the Lord reject your offering? Now, this is talking about bringing your offering to the Lord at the altar. And it says, because the Lord was witness, the Lord was witness to the covenant made at your marriage between you and the wife of your youth. Now, it's talking to the husband. He was a witness to that marriage, right? Mm -hmm. Against whom you have dealt treacherously. Talking about how he's dealt with his wife. To whom you were faithless, yet she is your companion and the wife of your covenant made by your marriage vows. The Lord's a little bit upset with the husband here. Yep. Why? Well, I, I think it's because... The uh, guidelines put forth by the Lord for the role of the husband is very clear in the word. Yes. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go over some of that in my response here. But uh, And I think that somewhere in the generations, the translation has gotten confused. The idea that men have and the idea that women have about what leadership is, about what submission is. Yes. Things like that have been vastly taken out of context. Yes. I'll start with men. Um, I'm in looking mostly at Ephesians for men, Ephesians 5, 25 through 33, which pretty much outlines... That's what I have to... Yep, pretty much outlines everything. The role of the husband. The role of the husband. <laughs> So I'm going to kind of just categorize it in an attempt to summarize those scriptures. The first thing is unconditional love. You're supposed to have, as a husband, you're supposed to have unconditional love for your wife as Christ loved the church. I think it's worth mentioning here that God is not commanding women to have unconditional love for their husbands. Of course we do. But that's not the commandment. For the wife, the commandment is for the husband, and uh, like Christ, he should be willing to die. The Christ was willing to die for his bride, the church. A husband should be willing to sacrifice himself, not just his life. When you say that's a pretty serious thing, Misty, mm-hmm. that's laid on the husband. Yes, yes. <sighs> the second thing is, I think a lot of people, a lot of men, really miss this. Is uh, there's a part of this thing that talks about sanctification. Yes. Sanctifying your wife. What sanctifying means is to make holy. Mm-hmm. Okay? A lot of men will have issues with their wives and they'll take and they'll say things they shouldn't say. Okay. Not just to other men, but in public. Maybe they mistreat her in public 
are less than respectful yes in public and when you're supposed to be making your wife holy you should do things that do that honor your wife that preserve her honor and so that you can pre- she can be presented as holy and without blemish Amen. you know so that means all that trash talking and I'm we're talking about men right now I'm yeah. gonna get to the women okay <laughs> okay I got plenty to say to you women out there but uh, we're talking about men right now. The next thing is we're supposed to cling to our wives. And I can't tell you, I know in my dating life, I ran into a lot of men who were very wrapped up in their family. Right. And even if you were to marry them, you know that you're marrying them and their family. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, the word says that you're, and we're not talking about you're supposed to forsake your family completely no. or anything like that. But you're supposed to cleave and cling to your she wife. She should be priority. Your okay. wife is supposed to be priority, not your not your family. Uh, you're supposed to be two. The two of you are supposed to be one flesh. Mm-hmm. And I'm not. I'm just going to give this last one or one more here, and then I'm going to turn it back over to you. Leadership. Now, this is a big one. This is a big one right here. A lot of men will say, well, my wife doesn't submit to me so that I can be a leader. But let's let's talk about leadership for men. I'm going to specifically refer to 1 Corinthians 11.3, which says that Christ is the head of every man and that the man is the head of the woman. And God is the head of as God is the head of Christ. That is misinterpreted by a lot of men to believe that women are second class citizens. The word never says that the wives are slaves. No. Or that you're to, you're to completely dominate them, or you're supposed to have all control. It doesn't. It doesn't. The husband that. is to serve her. That's right. where the problem comes in because of tradition. A lot of traditional traditional ways were that the wife served him, mm-hmm. but he didn't have to serve her, and that's not the way God said it was to be. Well, all we have to do, Mom, is look at the example of Christ in the church. Yes. Christ in the church, the whole uh, thing there is a picture of marriage. Christ, when he came, he came as a as a leader, but he also he was a servant. Sir. Leader. Yes, he served. He remember how he washed the feet yes. of his disciples. Yes. Yeah, you know, you're supposed to be a servant leader for your wife. It's not some domineering I'm in control, you can't breathe unless I say so type of thing. It's not the kind of leadership that we're talking about. Good leadership inspires one a woman to want to submit. Right. That's the whole point right there. If he is treating that woman right, she will submit to him. She will literally love the ground his feet walk on. Right. Part of leadership means that you're taking care of your wife's needs. As a servant to her, in that leadership role, you're supposed to make sure her physical needs are taken care of, her emotional needs are taken care of, and her spiritual yes. needs are taken care well, of. Colossians 3.19, husbands, love your wives, be affectionate, also be sympathetic, because women, what? Need that. Yeah. With them, and do not be harsh or bitter or resentful towards her. Yeah. You know, this isn't about men having a big head and thinking, oh, I'm in control. It's yeah. the way I, it's, it's my way or the highway. Right. It's not like that. No. Either God has put men in leadership of the home, but their leadership should be at such a level that it inspires their wife to, to want to follow them. First Peter 3, 7, in the same way you married men should live considerately with your wives with an intelligent recognition of the marriage relation, honoring the woman as physically the weaker, and she is, but realizing that you are joint heirs of the grace, God's unmerited favor of life, in order that your prayers may be not hindered. 
And so I just received, God will literally cut off his prayers. I just received something from the Lord. I entrust husbands with my daughters. Yeah. We are the daughters yes. of the Almighty he God. He says, I entrust my daughters because they are the fairer sex. They, yes, you know, the weaker. They are the weaker. That I, so I entrust them yes. to 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 their husbands to take care of them and to provide for them and to love them and adore them and to be there for them. Well, he gave his life for the church. Husbands are to love their wives as he loves the church. Right. It's very important to God. And God told me, I will hold husbands highly accountable for the way they treat their wives. Absolutely. This is... This is confirming it. I mean, so many husbands, you'll hear them say, I can't get my wife to submit. We're both, we're both Christians, and my wife won't submit. I'm going to be sh- just honest with you. Right here and now, your wife doesn't submit because she doesn't trust you. Right. If a good leader inspires trust. Yes. If you're not inspiring you trust. You want to follow them. If you're not inspiring trust in your wife, then you are not a good leader. Right. Now, I'm not saying there aren't always exceptions. There are women that are damaged by their past, and they may have very loving, very caring husbands, and they may still not submit. But 90% of the time, it's in a woman's nature right, to want to do that. Ephesians 5.30, However, let each man of you, without exception, love his wife as his own self, and let the wife see that she respects and reverences her husband. Right. That she notices him, she honors him, she prefers him, she venerates and esteems him, that she defers to him, praises him, loves and admires him exceedingly. That's the woman who literally loves the ground he walks on. As a woman listening to this, I'm sure that you will agree with us. If you had a man that just worshipped the ground that you walked on, that would set his needs aside to make, to make sure that you were provided yes. for, that has <laughs> your happiness in mind, that isn't going to do things that would hurt you uh, just for their own gratification, that doesn't just lose their temper for everything coming and going, that doesn't disrespect you in front of other people, that raises you up. Yes. Uh, that makes you feel That's a blessed man. precious. <laughs> that makes you feel precious. Yes. I'd be like, what do you need? <laughs> you need a helper? I'm, I'll be your helper. <laughs> I'm going to tell, tell you this. I know a Christian man, and he's been so blessed. And one day I asked him, I said, how is it that you're so blessed? He says, I put my wife first. I see to it that her needs are taken care of. I treat her, he literally told me, I treat her like the queen that she is. I'm the king and she's the queen in our house. Mm -hmm. And he said, every desire of her heart, everything she wants or needs, and she's a woman that knows within reason, you know, doesn't, doesn't go crazy. Right. He says, I see to it. I will go out of my way to see to it. She gets that taken care of and provided to her for and That's a blessed man right there. And I, you're telling me that's the answer of why you're so blessed? He said, yes. I believe in equality for women as much as anybody else does, okay? But I also recognize, and I've learned this through my life, and I would have never admitted this 30 years ago, But I will admit it now, having lived the life that I've lived, that women are truly, in general, I'm not going to speak for every woman, are generally not cut out to take on that burden of of the head of the household. Who would want it? Men can take that kind of stress. Yes. And they flourish under it. Yeah. Women, we become bogged down by it. Yes. And I'm not saying it's every woman. Maybe there's a woman out there who's going to say, that's not me. Okay, that's not you. But for the most part, uh, I mean, you can speak to this, Mom. In my earlier years, I was extremely 
The opposite way. Yes, women's live, honey. Let women's live. Carry the flag. Carry the, you know. <clears throat> and now I can honestly say I'm not a feminist. I believe in e equalism, that everybody has a right to be equal, equal in opportunity. But the reality is that God's plan is the better plan. Yes. Well, it was the plan he put out on this earth for a husband and wife from the beginning to see their marriage always would be blessed mm -hmm. if they followed this simple plan. And now look at this world. Look at family, how it's all but destroyed. Of course. Marriage. Marriage is one right after another. Because the, the home, the family, has been destroyed. Yes. The idea of the family has been destroyed when we started relying on other people to raise our children, and I'm not yeah, condemning yes. anybody. You have to do what you have to do to survive. But that's where we are. But we didn't trust God. If we'd have trusted God, we wouldn't have been out there and our children not being taken care of by one of the parents. But, I mean, you know, to, just to, to go the other way with it as well, there used to be a time where a man could work and provide for his family, yes. and his wife could stay home. And take care of the children. Yes. Here's the thing. Are you willing to believe and trust in God? Have the faith to let God handle your problems in your home. If that's a situation with you and you're needing money, you're needing this and you're needing that. Here's the thing. Until you completely learn to surrender to God and put everything in his hands, you're not going to see a change. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so the Lord told me, Misty, one time, when I, early, early on in my training of learning about faith and <clears throat> trusting him, he says, you will not trust in your husband's paycheck. Now that was going to be hard for me. But I learned Mm -hmm. I learned, no, I'm not trusting in my husband's paycheck today. I'm trusting in God to provide for me. You know, I will add one more thing before we move on to wives. God also put certain things in men and women that are the reason why this works, this, this plan works. Men have a desire within them to be needed. They have a desire within them to provide and to be appreciated. That's where their self-worth comes yes. from. Yes, well, she esteems him and she praises him. <clears throat> you know, to he be, needs To that. be able to feel like a man. Yes. And women, on the other hand, need something completely different. We need emotional support. And I'm not just talking about, it, you know, just, just emotional support. But we need a lot a lot more than just than what, what men need. Right. It's a whole different a different set of things that we're looking for. We need them to be affectionate and sympathetic with us. You know, I used to tell my husband all the time, I said, sometimes I just want you to say that, that you understand why, the way I feel, the way I do. And truly mean it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Not you know, just say it to get the conversation over. Just, just to get, over. get it over with. To get yeah. things. If I'm telling you that you said something that's hurt me, if you want to, to de-escalate it, all you have to do is turn around and say, I'm sorry if, if I hurt you. That's it. I'm sorry if I hurt you. I didn't mean to hurt you. You want to be justified. Yes. You want to feel like, okay, you recognize that that hurt me, and I and that's that's enough. Yes. Okay, let's talk about women. I think this is where you and I are going <laughs> to <laughs> have some disagreement. <clears throat> but uh, go ahead. You start. Well. I don't have anything to really say except that, yes, the wife is to submit to the husband. As long as he is in, in agreement with the word of God, she is to submit to him. But ultimately, at the end, if there's a decision that has to be made, she has to submit to it whether she feels it's right or not. As long as it's not something that's against the, yes, the word Yes, as long as it's not against the word of God, she has to submit. So what do you think... Then of women who don't submit. Whose well, responsibility is that? I can already tell you, it's not going to be a good marriage. Well, it's not going to be a good marriage. Who's the one that's, that's the problem? I mean, do you think the men are responsible, if they're still, still responsible if they're a good man and they want to 
do right by their wives, but their wife wife still doesn't want to submit to them. As long as they're doing what the word of God says and she doesn't submit, then it's his place to uh, let her know. I believe that as women, I mean, we are going to be accountable for what we do. Yes. It's not our husband's fault if we choose to be disobedient to the will of God. Right. Well, we all have our own free will. If you as a husband are doing everything you know and you have peace with it, you're trying to hold up your end of the deal and a woman is not, then at that point you're just going to have to go to God in prayer over it. Go to God in prayer over it? Ask God to intervene. Yes, and if it's still not working out, you must go to her. Yeah. And either tell her this is the way it is going to be now and... That's it. You know, she probably, when she hears him stand up and say that, she's going to turn around real quick. <laughs> probably. <laughs> well, let's, I do have some things that the Bible says are the responsibility of a wife. The first is to be a helper. Always. God made a woman to be man's helper. That's in you know, from the very beginning in Genesis. And in the Bible, the word helper is only used to describe two people. One is Eve, and the other one is is the Holy Spirit. So it is a powerful position to be to be helper. A helper is powerful. Yes, it is. And you're supposed to help your husband be all that God wants him to be. Him to be. And in exchange, he should be lifting you up so that you can be all that God wants you to be. Same. Yes. It's supposed to be a team. Yes. Working together. Working to together. To be all that God has, has planned for you to be. In unity. In absolute unity. Showing respect. We talked about this a little bit. Ephesians 5, 33 says that the Bible commands wives to respect their husbands. And in this scenario, the word respect means to revere, admire, and honor. Yes. A good wife values his opinion, admires his values, his character, considers his needs. Mm -hmm. He has, like I said, his need for self-confidence, his his need to be needed. You know, I remember one time my husband told me, sometimes I just like to hear, I really needed your help and I appreciated that you did that for me. There's something inside of men that want to be to to have be recognized to say yes, I had a need and you met it. I think you really have to at, at sometimes you got to uh, discern whether he needs your help or not. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because I'm uh, amen to that, sister. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because sometimes uh, it's like like you're aggravating or interfering with his manhood. How how dare you come and, and tell me how to do this now or help me in this? I, I'm I'm able to do it. Well, I'm I don't sure need you've your got help. some funny stories to tell yeah, about that. I'll, I'll I'll share one of mine. My husband one time was <laughs> he was putting a doorknob on, <laughs> and for some reason I don't know if there was a problem with the door frame, but there was something that wasn't working right that it was causing the doorknob not to close and lock properly. And he was just getting so frustrated. And so I started looking, you know, me, I go online. And oh, I start yes. I start looking for solutions. And I just I'm thinking I'm thinking I'm being a helper. <laughs> and I'm, I start rattling off well, maybe, you know, according to this, uh, me, he, he just looked at me and said, would you shut up, please? Yeah. Would you just leave me alone? That's what I'm saying. you, you got to discern when it's wise to help and when it's not wise to help when they're working on the, when, when like, they're working on I don't a project. need you to tell me how to put yeah. on the door. <laughs> yeah. Well, so of course, you know, in my head, I'm like, well, apparently you do. <laughs> <laughs> but, but sometimes wives have to just shut up. Sometimes you bite just your tongue, to and shut and if you see that they're getting frustrated and angry, then pray for them. Pray for them, like you said, and just leave them. Leave, leave them. it alone. Leave it alone. <laughs> leave it alone. It's like an old bear. Yeah. You just don't want to climb in that cave. Just, <laughs> just stay out of just it. Just stay out of it. it you I'm know? not getting in this. No. Nope, nope. <laughs> oh, all right, that's fine with me. I don't need to hear it anymore. I'm out of here. You take care of it. You deal with it. 
And I'm going to speak a little bit about submission. I think you might have referenced this as well, but you know, over in Colossians. Um, the Bible does say, wives, that we're supposed to subject ourselves or submit as is fitting to the Lord. Now, I don't know if a lot of men really think about this, but this says, wives, you are supposed to submit to your husbands. Now, what does that imply? A choice. Mm-hmm. You know, you're not a slave. Right. You're not forced into it. Yes. It's a choice that you make. Your wife chooses whether or not she wants to sub- she's going to submit or she's not going to well, submit. Well, somewhere in the word it says that we are to submit to one another. That's true too, but we know that the husband is, is supposed to be the lead, the wife is supposed mm-hmm. to submit. But like I said, if you have a husband that's a true leader and puts you on that pedestal I mean, you don't care. You're just like, I submit. I could submit to this. I submit to this life. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm. Count me in. Yes. I'll put my hand up. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm sad to say this. So many times we don't know the person we're marrying before right. we marry them. That's why premarital counseling is so important. Yes. Because people a lot of times will marry and they don't even know what the expectations mm-hmm. are. Or they think that they can change the other person. Oh, no. You ain't changing anybody. And let me tell you, that don't work. No. Only God can change. Now, I can't compare my time being married to yours. I mean, you've been married, what, a million years? Misty. (laughs) Forty-three years, Misty. (laughs) I've only been married 14. Next year's my 15. But I can tell you, is submission is not blind obedience. Okay, this is, these are two different things. Submitting the choice that you make, but it is not blind obedience for women. It doesn't mean that women are inferior to men. Now, that's something that I struggled with for a long time in my life. Because I, I thought this was God's way of saying that women were inferior to men. That's not the case at all. I know, just as a funny little note, I told my husband one time when he was talking to me about wives who were supposed to submit to their husbands, I think I said to him, uh, just remember that in the next in the next world, the first will be last, and the last will be first. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm just teasing. Anyway, yeah, it's not. Would you agree with me though? It's not blind obedience. You no. just don't do everything that your husband tells you to do. But your your husband should be somebody that you can entrust yourself to. If there's no trust, there's no submission. It's and submission goes hand in hand with the husband's role of leadership. Uh, in submitting, the wife gives the husband the opportunity to become the leader God wants him to be. That's right. I believe, personally, that when we go to meet our maker, I think there's going to be a special place for the, for the woman that was able to submit to her husband. Because Jesus emphasized so much about being a servant in order to be a leader. He, he said first he had to come to serve. Mm-hmm. And but then when he returned, he would return as a king, the, the king of kings. And I think that, I mean, what is your opinion on that? I think that men, women, the, a woman that can actually submit to her husband is going to have a special place in the heart of God. Yes, I believe so too. Because she serves. That's her whole role. From the time she's married, has children, it's always to serve. If you really look at this thing, it's really about both sides serving one another. Yes. God gave men strength. He gave women strength. Yeah. Like there's times when I was putting up a curtain rod the other day, couldn't get the drill into the wall right, and I'm thinking... I wish my husband was here. He'd just whip this thing right in here, you know, and I'm struggling with this to get mm-hmm. it. But I finally got it, but still, I needed him there to help me. Yeah. He needed to, I needed him to help me sometimes. Well, yeah, I mean, there's different times I've had to do things, physical, laborious things, and uh, my husband wasn't around. I'm sitting there thinking, phew. The, the fact that he takes they take care of moving things and, and taking care of the yard and Stuff like that. I mean, that's just work I wouldn't want well, to have to do. That's where the words are. They're the stronger vessel. You know, they can handle it. But I was getting stressed out over it and putting a screw into one. Oh, you know, it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so let's let's 
do a little bit of problem solving here for women who have husbands that are not good leaders. So let's take, for example, a husband that's not someone that you can trust, mm. to, that you can submit yourself to, because you don't feel like they have your best interests at heart. I mean, obviously, the divorce rate is very has been very high for a rampant. very long time. It's rampant. And a lot of times it's because we go into marriages thinking that someone's going to just miraculously change over time or that we're going to be able to mold them into what we want them. Well, what I was fixing to say earlier was that a lot of times, you know, you get fooled. Uh, They pretend to be their this and that before you get married, and then wham, when you get married, they're not that at all. That is why it is so important to know that you're hearing from God. Yes. Before you marry anybody. If you're single right now... You don't know how good you got it, number one. <laughs> uh, but number two, but the main, main thing is don't be too quick to get married to anybody because the old saying, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, is so powerful here. Yes. You need to know that you're hearing from God. Yes. You need to resist the flesh. Yes. You know, we have an urge to, well, maybe we want to have children. Well, we let our emotions We rules. want to be a companionship. Believe me, yes. you don't want bad companionship. Bad companionship is worse than, than being alone. Yes. By far. Let the Holy Spirit lead you. Let the Holy Spirit yes. lead you. But if you are married to a man. You're already in the situation. I mean, God still, we know what how what God feels about marriage. It's a covenant. Yes. Um, You must pray. If you're already in a bad situation, all you can do is pray for that husband or that wife. I mean, I'll give a little bit of a testimony here. When I got married, I wasn't actively following the Lord. Uh, I was, quote, Christian multiple times throughout my life, but during this particular time, I wasn't. And so I got married... No regard to what God thought about my marriage. My husband, I found out after that he was not, even though I was not a practicing Christian, my heart still believed in God. And it wasn't until after that I found out that he didn't was not Christian at all. When I did return to God, which was like uh, several years ago now, he was not a Christian. And it was very difficult to be in a relationship with somebody as a Christian Knowing that they're not. Well, what's the Bible say? We're not to marry outside of what we, we right. believe. But the moral of, of the story is I the only thing I could do at that point was start praying. Right. Is to start turning it over to God and say, you know, God, you're going to have to do something with this situation because I, I don't know where to go from here. Mm-hmm. And I just sort of took a, a step back from it I would talk to him about the Lord here and there, but I didn't shove it down his throat or anything. And lo and behold, over time and through certain circumstances, he started coming back to God because he he was a a Christian as a child. For a word to the women out there, sometimes you just have to be patient. You have to let God work. Yes. And, And unless somebody is mistreating you, Physically or emotionally, we need to make every possible effort to let God take over, to yield it to God, and to try to repair our, the marriage as much as we possibly can. That's it. I mean, because God can work miracles. Yes, He can. It may seem impossible to you, but it is not impossible to God. And if you're a husband out there and you've got a wife, and maybe she's, you know, for whatever reason, is not on board. With that, you have to do the same thing. Mm-hmm. You may, you also lead, lead as the example before them. That's what I and did sometimes too. that'll win them. Because I know for a long time during our marriage, I mean, we would argue. When I got back in back with the Lord, I started changing my behavior. Yes. And he, he, no, he saw that over time. Yeah. He saw that. Now, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I don't sometimes still do things I shouldn't do, say things I shouldn't say. We're all all fallible. We all make mistakes. And he's gradually moving. And if he can move, anybody can move. (laughs) 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 Because 
Because I did not expect that. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, I think we've covered this topic. By all means, chime in. Give us your thoughts and opinions. Give us an opportunity to, to respond. If you have a question, please click on the link down below. And uh, you'll be able to go to our website and give us a question. And we will do our best to try to answer it live here on the podcast. Otherwise, I think that we're pretty much good today. And we'll see you all next week. God bless you and keep you. And have a, a wonderful, peaceful week. Yes. Yes, amen and amen. amen.